Hello, welcome to a new video in the FLTK Rust series. In this episode, uh, we'll just be presenting some tips uh, when using FLTK. So uh, basically here I have a small FLTK project. We're using basically the template from the um, FL2 Rust uh, template uh, repo using uh, the Fluid uh, uh, Designer. So uh, I have it installed under FLTK Fluid and the GUI file is called main view.fl. So basically we have this uh, window and uh, with a single button we uh, just set the callback for the button and it prints hello. Uh, it prints works so uh, cargo run. So this is basically it. Uh, I have uh, Fluid set as a uh, to have a JTK based uh, theme so uh, we can just uh, change this here and it should look uh, basically the same with scheme and uh, so it basically looks uh, the same except for the colors which we can change if you wanted so the first thing is basically all FLTK apps have uh, scaling, automatic scaling. If you press control and plus, it increases the scale. So this is fluid and we can decrease it with a minus, control minus. And the, the applications that we built automatically also have scaling. So control plus, control minus. So let's uh, return to 100%. So this is automatic, uh, provided by FLTK itself. So uh, another thing I wanted to talk about is uh, groups. So uh, if uh, there's a, uh, if you've noticed, it's it's sometimes difficult to uh, uh, override the resizing of FLTK apps. So, uh, for example, in our application here, uh, let's make the window resizable. So, uh, just uh, click resizable, OK, close, sa save this, and run. So, making the window resizable basically uh, means that every widget inside is resizable. Uh, you can override this by using groups basically so here if we add a group for example group and uh, let's give it a name uh, GRP uh, close this we can also uh, set the sizes here uh, the width for example just drag this and here and drag this close you can also use the uh, uh, mouse to resize things and let's say we have a button inside the uh, group and uh, let's say let's just check so this button is inside this group and we have these two buttons here and we wanted uh, for example to uh, set their sizes to be uh, equal uh, so uh, make same size both so now we have basically two buttons of the same size and let's save this and for example if we wanted to override the uh, resizing so uh, maybe we didn't save this file so yeah we have this and here oh yeah just this is just updating some reading things and basically forgot this so basically you can see these two buttons are the same size and when we resize the window both are resized if we wanted 
to override this, we can basically just set the group itself as non-resizable. So uh, we called it group uh, resize make resizable to false. So now if we build this. Now if we, for example, resize the window, you, you can notice that the lower button is resized and the uh, button inside the group is no longer resized. Uh, the third thing I want to talk about is uh, hovering. So uh, by default, FLTK doesn't do anything when you hover over a widget. However, you can basically just uh, uh, fix this uh, by basically handling the event enter and event leave. So for example, uh, let's just remove the button and the group. Save this and here we can override the so this is our button and the event. Just uh, import the enums and uh, let's take everything. We'll change the color, for example. And here we'll have to override the enter event, which is uh, when the cursor basically enters the widget. And as we know, the uh, handle uh, method uh, expects a true or false uh, for events which are handled. So also handle the leave event. And for the rest, just return false. And here for the leave, we'll just say true. And let's say uh, when we hover over the button, let's give it a white color, for example. So our button here, set color. We have to redraw the button. And when we leave the button, let's give it a uh, just the background color. So now when we hover over the button, we get the white color uh, automatically. When we leave, we get the background color. And our callback still works, so if we click, we get the print line works. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about is uh, widget animations. So uh, basically, uh, the concept itself is basically simple. Uh, we can, for example, here um, basically just uh, use a thread and uh, resize or set the position of the widget uh, during uh, resizing or uh, for, uh, for example, uh, 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 the target position or size, for example, uh, so let's say uh, we're going to move our button here, so and we basically want to resize this or move it, so we'll make it mutable, and here we'll use uh, just thread spawn And let's say while uh, button X is larger than zero, uh, we'll set the position of the button itself. Uh, let's say button X minus, uh, let's say five, and the Y in the same position. So it should be just uh, as if it's being dragged to the left and uh, we'll add a sleep here uh, let's say 30 milliseconds and uh, we can uh, redraw the parent so we don't get any uh, dragging uh, artifact so uh, I'm going to click here. So you can basically just have the animation just expand the, bu the button, go upwards, whatever, um, 
to a certain size as you like. You can make it faster. Um, let's change this the sleep for example and uh, the movement. just for a smoother movement. Uh, that was basically it for this video. Uh, enjoy, uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching it and uh, thanks again for watching. Bye.